Hey my loves, it's me Keisha and I am here with my All Tea All Shade Couples Retreat Season 2 Episode 3 Review. Now you guys know I missed the first two episodes but I got caught up today so I'm fully prepared for Episode 3's review. So this episode picks up exactly where left last week's episode left off with Nick walking off on Kiana when she talks about his parenting um because she says that you know he likes to post on social media like he's just hands-on great dad but in reality that ain't really the true T so he gets mad when she hits his ass with the truth now I love Kiana Kiana was featured on this series that own did like it was it was something to the effect of like the women behind the man. And she had an episode, Gia Casey, DJ, um, what's that nigga name? DJ, DJ drama. No, that ain't drama. Uh, the nigga from the breakfast club. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. Gia Casey had an episode, loved her, got to learn so much more about her. And Kiana is just not what we thought when we were introduced to her on Basketball Wives a few years ago. Like, she's so smart. She's so intelligent. Her and Swaggy were um, high school, college sweethearts and everything. And he really did her wrong. He really honestly did. Um, but they have, you know, a family together. He's the father of all of her children. Um, and she's just a really smart, wholesome girl. I really, truly like her. And so he walks off, like I said, and KJ, who is with Claudia, was like, you know, she should be made. He acts like a fucking 12 year old. And I honestly agree. Swaggy is very childish. He is spoiled, rotten. And it's like, he's richy rich like he doesn't want to fucking grow up and be a fucking man i mean the man does walk around calling himself swaggy p and he still got a mohawk that says a lot so he ends up coming back eventually and kiana says that she wants him to support you know her with the kids while she goes to school like she can't do everything nigga you ain't playing basketball no more you're at home help me with these fucking kids i've been doing everything for years and she's right to think and feel that way and to ask for that from him. So he was like, all right, you right or whatever. But she feels like he just saying that to shut her up. And I honestly felt the same way too. Like you can tell by the look on her face, she is tired. Like she is at that point where she's going to leave him. I remember that look. I've had that look on my face in past relationships. So I can tell that girl is tired of him and his bullshit. So the later on that night after the exercise Danny who was with Jess Hilarious says that him calling Jess jealous doing the exercise was just him being petty and I was like well if you sitting up here being petty like you're not even speaking your truth which means that you're not gonna get anywhere because you're not even being honest in the process I don't like him I don't like that goddamn fucking silver or gold whatever the fuck he got at the bottom of his mouth i just don't like him i don't see it for him like boy get the fuck out of here he the only non-celebrity on this motherfucker outside of claudia nigga and rada or whatever <clears throat> but i feel like he was trying to just do team too much to like get clout or something from the guys and it was just like boy you have several so kj says that when they went to sleep, Claudia was on the computer, and when he woke up, she was on the computer. And this is part of the reason why their sex life is in the toilet. Um, she, however, says that she's always on the computer because he's not aggressive, and he don't really be trying to get to the pussy like that. So <laughs> if he ain't trying to get to it, she going to be online handling her business, working or whatever. I just don't understand this relationship between them two. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on right there, but um, I don't know, child. I don't know. So Kiana and Claudia go kayaking. She was originally supposed to do it with Swaggy, but she ain't seeing him right now. Like, she just does not want to be around him. Claudia goes on to say that she has never seen KJ even cry. This man had been in the military, then fought overseas and came home, had children, all of these things. But he is, she has never seen him cry. And I think that nigga might have some, some shit that he done blocked out. You know what I'm saying? He just might be one of those people who have trained himself to not be emotional because, you know, it could 
send him into a, a dark place or send him into a spiraling place. And I myself can connect with that. So maybe that's something that he needs to work on privately with a therapist because you have to be able to show emotion in a relationship. So Kiana admits to Claudia that, you know, she takes, care of everything when um swaggy was in the nba she would allow him just to sleep in and stuff because you know he had to stay focused on the game and his training and stuff so she would take up the slack doing everything with the kids you know taking care of the household and you know she never got a chance to do anything for herself so what she's asking is not too much and he should be willing to and be you know like i got you I got you. You didn't held me down all these years with my our son. Then we had our two other children. Let me have your back now while I try to figure out what my next move is. So I just don't appreciate the way that, you know, he is handling her. And I got to blame Kiana, too, because she has spoiled him so much. You know what I'm saying? She didn't make him, you know, help out with their children. So now he look at the kids like they his friends pretty much like oh i'll play with him when i want to and then when i'm done going back to your mama so she should have you know told the line with that years ago where yeah i'll let you sleep in sometimes but nigga you gotta get the fuck up and help me because i ain't had these motherfuckers by myself nigga fuck that i don't give a fuck about you being swaggy p nigga you these goddamn kids daddy nigga and my fucking partner you need to help me so shamari and rada talk and shamari opens up more about her and um ronnie's past um uh, open relationship <clears throat> and how she had gotten you know so swept up in it that she even moved in with the girl that she was seeing and it they almost were at the brink of divorce and everything and rada admits finally that she does not want to be in an open relationship and i was like duh just say that like <clears throat> she's trying so hard to conform her life to fit into michael's life and she's not being honest about her wants and her needs but the problem is she started off the relationship on some you know threesomes fucking in these girls and shit and that's what he has become accustomed to she, the way she brought herself into the relationship is not who she wants to be now and yes you have the right to change but also you have to look at the fact that he does not and so in that lies I need to move on if he's not willing to put his penis up. And it's obvious that he's not. It's something in him where he just likes to have sex with all of these different women. And he just cannot control himself. I don't know if it's ugly man syndrome. Where when he was growing up, he didn't get no play. But now that he got money, he can get all the hoes that he couldn't get back in the day. I don't know if that's the case. But whatever the case is, it's nasty and it's fucking disgusting and gross because i wouldn't trust that nigga to fuck him without a rubber if uh, i would need a hazmat suit to fuck michael blackson like that is fucking disgusting disgusting uh, so disgusting so danny and jess going a bike ride and he admits to her that he was being petty doing the exercise and she looking at him like well what the fuck are we doing if you're not gonna even be honest about the shit i just don't like him so kiana and nick have a double date with ajua and styles p from the locks ajua is so fucking beautiful to me oh my god she is stunningly gorgeous beautiful woman beautiful i'm not even really understanding why her and styles are there because they seem like they are helping all the other couples at this point i feel like once again that they only came on the show for a check because we just saw they ass like two seasons ago on marriage boot camp hip-hop edition so they're sitting down talking and you know they're trying to help kiana and nick and kiana was like you know i don't feel like you listen to me nor do you care about the things that i have to say and she was like do you even know why i want to go back to school like do you even even get it and he says that you know he feels like she gets bored with things very easily and uh that when she's studying she doesn't really have time for the kids and he's the one taking care of them and then she wanted to sit up there and make that comment about him not being a present father and at this point ajua and styles excuse themselves so they can have some alone time to continue their conversation Kiana refuses to back down at this point and Nick was like oh all right that's how you feel I'm going to sleep so he turned his back on her and he lay down 
and Kiana then gets up and walks off and leaves like she's very upset and she goes down um on the boat to talk to Ajua and Ajua just feels really bad for her because she's experienced the same things in the past with Styles. Styles talks to Swaggy and he was like, you know, I feel like as men, we just prone to just being like, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, I don't want to talk about this shit. He was like, but I got to a place where I had to realize and put myself in her shoes. You know what I'm saying? So Nick was like, you know, you right, OG. I'm going to go talk to her. So he goes downstairs and finds Kiana and he grabs some grapes and he trying to make her laugh and shit. And she like, no, nah, that's cool. But no, we need to have a serious conversation. I don't want to play and joke with your ass. Everything is not a fucking game. And so he was like, but we talk about the same stuff all the time. And she was like, see, they're goes the problem like everything is a joke everything is play play you never want to be serious you ne you're not listening to me and you're not hearing me cry out to your ass and he just doesn't get it and she was like you know what i'm done so she gets up and walks away from him again and i'm like yeah this boy is like he's literally a boy there's nothing manly about him at all like he really truly needs to grow the fuck up so KJ and Claudia sit down and talk to AJ and when they sit down he kisses Claudia on the cheek and AJ was like why did you kiss her on the cheek and not in the mouth and he was like um uh, uh, he stuttered she stuttered all over the place and Claudia was like because I have on lipstick he doesn't like to kiss me with lipstick like if I kiss him with lipstick on he'll literally wipe it off or whatever and uh AJ just hit him with a one hit a quitter she was like but do you do that when you go down on her <laughs> and dude was sitting there like the what the what the what <laughs> i was like i agree girl i agree um he just got too many quirks and shit for me like and now i understand where claudia is coming from with the spont spontaneity of it all like damn nigga can you just throw that to the side sometimes like the fuck is going on here so um he then goes on to say that he feels like he's very romantic when it comes to their relationship. He was like, you know, I cook for her because, you know, a lot of dudes don't cook. I know so many niggas that cook. Cooking a me a meal ain't really doing shit for me nowadays. Claudia, however, disagrees. She was like, I crave romance from this man. I don't even understand how he feels like he's romantic. And there goes another problem. Like their communication is so off. So AJ asks KJ and um, Claudia, are they attracted to each other? And Claudia was like, um, ah. And she was like, no, it's a yes or no question. Claudia was like, yeah, but that um and I says something totally different. Then she asked KJ and he was like, no, not anymore. And she was like, damn, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> Shit. Claudia begins to tear up and cry and KJ was like, you know, but she's worth the effort and the growth. But Claudia in her confessional was like, if you're not attracted to me and then you're saying that our lack of sex is a complaint, then why are we together? Because it's obvious that we're not having sex because you're not attracted to me, but yet until you're trying to blame it on me. So at this point, I'm truly not understanding why they're together. And AJ even pointed out they have more of a friend vibe than uh, being in love vibe. And he says that he's in love with her. Claudia was like, this is my first time ever hearing that from him. First time. And they've been together for years at this point. So once again, I'm still confused on why the fuck are they together? I'm not understanding this at all. Like, what is happening here? So AJ don't even understand why they're together. KJ in his confessional that night was like, you know, I fucked up. Things is really bad. You know, I hurt her feelings and hurting her feelings hurt me. And hopefully she doesn't take it too personal. The nigga, you said you're not fucking attracted to her. And then you said this shit on camera for the whole world to see. But you hope she don't take it too personal. Girl, I can't stand niggas. So she don't feel at this point like they gonna even make it like she's still crying her eyes is red and i feel bad for her but i would rather hear the truth than to still be led on by somebody because they need to leave each other the fuck alone and just be good judies so the next day kj says that you know he messed up and that he loves claudia he really want to be with her but i'm like you're not attracted to her you have all these quirks and you're blaming her for shit I'm like, what is going on? Do you have erectile dysfunction? <laughs> like, 
what is happening? Because Claudia's a, a beautiful woman. So I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, do you not like women? Like, I don't, I don't get it. So he then goes on to say, but that she needs to make a few changes in order for him to get back to the way things used to be. Once again, he's still complaining and making it seem like she's the issue. But if you're just not attracted to her, ain't no amount of change and gonna help that. Like what you want her to do? Like, is it something about her that you're not attracted to in particular? Like I need more information. So at this point, Kiana don't even want to try no more when it comes to Swaggy. They slept in separate beds. He slept on the couch and she just like, I'm gonna leave it up to him at this point. And I don't fucking blame her. I really honestly do because I'm tired and I ain't even in that relationship. Nick plans, however, to make it up to her that day. He goes to her, gives her a kiss, and he trying to talk all sweet and shit to her. But she is not for the bullshit. She like, nigga, okay, whatever. So Ronnie DeVoe returns from being on a little mini tour, and Shamari fills him in on everything that happened while he was gone. And they decide to host a love language exercise with the couples. And so everybody has to fill out a little questionnaire about what their love language is. Swaggy actually gets Kiana's exactly right. And it makes her so happy to see that he does listen to her. Um, you know, they share a kiss and everybody's rooting for them. Quality time, however, for Styles P is rolling up a blunt and just sitting back. <laughs> Some straight New York nigga shit. When it gets to Jess and Danny, he doesn't think that this whole exercise even applies to him because he does not love Jess. Jess is pissed off. She is embarrassed. Everybody is embarrassed for her. Nobody sees it for him and their relationship because he's an asshole. And he tells her that he don't, you know, really want to talk all the time. He don't want to hear her talk all the time. And Jess is just sitting there with the screw face on, pissed off and mad. And he is embarrassing. He's a clown. And she even said out her own mouth, he's a clown. And I just don't understand why they're together. She needs to leave this nigga to fuck along and get some self-esteem about herself and stop fucking with these ain't shit ass niggas. Cause girl, bye. Overall, I give tonight's episode a couples therapy an A. You know, it's a good episode, but I'm just not understanding why half of these couples are the fuck together. They need to leave each other the fuck alone. I don't see it for Jess and Danny at all. Claudia and KJ need to leave each other alone. And um, I think that Swaggy and Kiana can work it out. I don't understand why Ajua and Styles P are there at all at this point. Um, Shamari and Ronnie, uh, I want to delve more into, like, why are they actually here? Are they still you know, having issues from the open relationship stuff in the past. I think we're going to learn something about their sex life isn't that great either. So, yeah, I just need more context on what's going on. But overall, I'm enjoying this season. Let's talk down below in the comments section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button, you guys. I love you, and I will see you on the next review. Bye.